I'd like to welcome you all to Community Financial Literacy's annual event and our neighborhood block party. My name is Quincy Hensel. I am currently the interim CEO at the Portland Regional Chamber of Commerce, and I also serve on the board of directors of CFL, and we want to welcome you all here this evening. It's great to see such a wonderful crowd. I do want to recognize a few people who are with us tonight. I do know that we have the mayor of Portland, Mayor Strimling, is here with us. Thank you for joining us this evening. I also know that we have, two, I've seen two city councilors here. There may be more. I have seen Councilor Brennerman, who I see right there, and I did see Councilor Dusan, who is somewhere. Oh, there she is. Thank you. I don't know if there's other councilors here. If there are, could you please shout out? Excellent. Well, thank you, Councillors Brennerman and Dusan, for joining us this evening. It's wonderful to have you. And for all of you who might be new to CFL, I just want to give you a little bit of a background as to who we are. Uh, CFL is a growing 501c3 located here in Portland, and we offer financial services, including financial literacy courses, one-on-one -on -one financial counseling and coaching, individual development accounts, or IDAs, counseling for higher education, small business support, and we also have a focus on workforce development. Our services are open to all refugees, immigrants, asylees, as well as low-income Mainers who are in the greater Portland area as well as the Lewis and Auburn area. And more or less since our beginning about 11 years ago, we have gathered for an annual event to celebrate the work that we've done in the community as well as to celebrate the achievements of our students. We also use this opportunity this evening to share with all of you a little bit about what we have done and the successes we've had in our community. So I'll give you a little bit of info on the show flow for the evening because I know people always want to know what is in store. I have a few additional opening remarks that I'm going to share with you. We are also going to hear from our presenting sponsor this evening, which is Hannaford, as well as our executive director, Claude Rwanje. And then we're going to hear from a few students of CFL. We'll wrap it up with a paddle raise, a few closing remarks, and then we're going to announce the winners of our silent auction. So I do want to take just a moment to thank all of the generous supporters as well as participants of this evening's event. First of all, I want to thank the performers. I'm not sure if you saw them, but they were fantastic. We had the Aquaba Ensemble, who were the drummers who were here earlier, as well as the pseudo dancers. And after this evening's remarks, we are going to welcome the Aki Acoustic Band as well to do a performance for you. I'd also like to thank our generous sponsors of this evening's event. As I mentioned, our presenting sponsor is Hannaford. Our Old Port sponsor is Wells Fargo. Our Bayside sponsors are the Maine Credit Union League, Bangor Savings Bank, Plansons International, L.L. Bean, Family Wealth Management Partners at UBS, and Seaport Credit Union. And we also have a list of additional sponsors as well as in-kind donations in your program, and they are also on the screens that you will see on either side of the room. I have a very special shout out this evening to Helen Andrioli, who is a member of 
the CFL board alongside me, Helen, over here, who Helen chaired. We'll give her a round of applause. Now I'll tell you what, Heather, what Helen did. Um, Helen chaired our annual event committee, which made this event possible, and she put a huge amount of time and energy into this. So I want to thank her for all that she did and all of her dedication to CFL. I also want to thank the marvelous Sally Newhall from Sea Glass Events. Where is Sally? <laughs> She's probably, oh, there she is waving over there. Sally orchestrated the planning and the execution of this event, and she has really taken our annual event up to the next level. So I would love a round of applause for Sally as well. And a very special thank you and a shout out to Craig Tribuno. Where is Craig? He's probably in the back with the oven. I don't know where he is, I don't see him, but I'm sure he's in the back, but there he is. Now, Craig is the president of systems engineering here in Portland. He also serves on the board of directors of CFL, and he made all of the food tonight. Craig actually made the food. And for any of you who ate what was ever in the cone, I haven't had the food yet, but Craig actually bought a woodworking router and learned how to use it and made the cones for the food. So. Craig is walking away from this event that much more talented than he was before we executed this. But a huge thank you to Craig, just an awesome contribution to this event. And last but very far from least, I do want to take a moment to thank our staff at CFL because without them, we truly would not exist. Mara, Florica, Stacy, and Clement as well as our executive director, Claude Rwanje, who is a phenomenal leader and definitely a force within our community. They're probably all standing in the back. Claude is here in the front. I'd like a huge round of applause for the staff at CFL. It is truly an honor and a privilege to serve on the board of directors of CFL and see the incredible work that these individuals do on a daily basis. Thank you for your continuous dedication to CFL and our mission. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce to the stage Sherry Stevens, who is the Community Relations Specialist at Hanover, who, as I mentioned earlier, is our presenting sponsor of this evening's event. Thank you, Quincy, and good evening. I'm, I know I'm speaking for myself and my fellow Hannaford associates in the room when I say that it's a real pleasure to be here tonight and spend a little bit of time with you on your busy day. I look around and I see a heartwarming representation of community coming together to, to help new Mainers reach their goals through the work of community financial literacy. Thank you for being here and for all that you do to support the mission of CFL. At Hannaford, we understand the importance of building and sustaining healthy communities. When our communities are strong, we all benefit. Like other businesses in this room tonight, many of our customers and our associates live here. This is where we raise our children. We love this city. In our case, it's where our business began over 130 years ago. We know that without the support and encouragement of these local communities, we would not have grown from that small produce stand down here on the waterfront to over 180 stores in our five state service area today. That's why it's so exciting to be here with you tonight and see, help us recognize and celebrate the work that CFL is doing in these communities or for these communities today and as we look forward into the future. Community financial literacy provides, and I know Quincy touched on this a minute ago, but I'll touch, I'll mention a few more. Community financial literacy provides an array of services to new Mainers, including but not limited to education on basic household budgeting, employment and payroll deductions, 
retirement counseling, and navigating the often complex process of applying for and attaining a higher education. I want to hesitate right there because just saying that out loud, I'm thinking, Claude, I could have used your help but myself a few times. But this is an enormous benefit to the people they serve, but also to all of us in the room as they apply for jobs, um, start businesses, buy homes, and shop in our communities. In essence, this is an event that allows us all to pay it forward. Welcoming new Mainers that come from near and far offers us the ability to learn and, and to grow, to become stronger and better individuals, and to create a long-term economic sustainability for the state of Maine. We truly appreciate Claude and his team, and we're grateful for their hard work to educate and prepare new, Ma new Mainers for employment. They are grooming the workforce that we all draw from. The people that they coach are our customers. They are supporting individuals who bring diverse and valuable per perspectives to our organizations. At Hannaford, we have seen these benefits firsthand. We are extremely grateful for the knowledge and insight that we have gained from new Mainers that have joined our business. We're exploring a partnership with Claude to identify ways to do more to tap into the full potential that new Mainers can attain for themselves and bring that knowledge and skills to the workplace. We understand that in order to prosper, we must have full representation of the diversity within the communities that we serve. We're very, very proud to sponsor this event tonight and bring awareness of the services that CFL provides but we're also thrilled to have the opportunity to network with other individuals and organizations that support the cause. Thank you again for being here, and we hope that you enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. This is great. I'm really enjoying it. Two years ago, I was telling my uh, fellow uh, staff yesterday that maybe seven years ago, when I did a presentation to an event like this, I had five pages long. <laughs> and uh, so, and the people keep telling me, this time is going to be 10 minutes. And one of my staff always say, cut it off, it's time. Um, I'm really happy and pleased to be here. One thing that made me mostly happy about this event, I did not even spend 30 minutes working for it. <laughs> you heard what Quincy said. Helen, Mara, Stacy, the volunteers, Sally, they did all. Please give them a hand again. Sherry was my colleague. We just graduated together at the Live 360, and I see my co other colleagues here as well. So thank you very much, Emily Adams and others who are here for coming tonight to support us. Thank you. I don't want to really repeat myself from what Quincy said for the sake of time. But we are honored to have our mayor and all the city councils here supporting new mayors. Last year, they really did something special that everybody can remember, opening the Office of Economic Opportunity for new mayors. It was a heck of a job. The city of Poland is a welcoming city, but we want to make sure that this is extended to the other city as well. So we want to make sure that Maine is a welcoming state and that all of us can be happy because we need new manners for different reasons that Quincy and myself I'm going to repeat and the Sherry already talked about it. One, we need them 
to fill the gap of the aging population we have in our workforce development. We need new manners to grow our economy in a state of me. We need new manners as entrepreneurs. We need new manners to pay taxes beyond what people say the new manners are here to take away. That's not true. We are here as a part of the state to contribute ourselves to the growth of the state. So all of you, the funders, the donors, the sponsors, you are planting seeds. There is no doubt that you, have, you will have a return on your investment. I'm sure you will, one way or the other, you're going to harvest from every investment you are making. Now, before Mara tells me that my time is up, I'm going to go to my, uh, my main speech that brought me here. Every year, we recognize either individuals, organizations, and businesses that either have worked hard as a partner, as sponsor, as uh, uh, volunteers to the organization. So the three awards that we're going to give today, one is the Volunteer of the Year Award, and the other one is Commitment to Service Award, and the Outstanding Community Partner Award. Our 2016 Volunteer of the Year Award goes to Katrin Odede. <laughs> so, <laughs> Katrin came to CFL looking for a way to volunteer. We did not know that Katrin had a CPA in her skills or background. Over the sudden, we put her to work, and she has been doing really a great work in the last almost a full year with community financial literacy. Catherine secured a job, a full-time job, but she continued to work and volunteer with CFL. Please help me to welcome Catherine on the stage to come and get her award. For those who are in the room looking for employee, Katrin will be a best employee if you can have her. Really, she's really good. But more than just Katrin, I invited some of my fellow immigrants to come and network with many employers who are here today to see if they can secure some employment. Please, there is many skilled immigrants who are in the room today, but probably who are underpaid, but they will be happy to really network with you and work for you if you do have some openings. Our next award goes to, uh, it's uh, our 2016 commi Commitment to Service Award goes to Lewiston Adult Education. Lewiston Adult Education is a comprehensive adult education program offering academic vocational and enrichment learning opportunities. As a part of the Lewiston Adult School Department, LAE offers this program uh, at several accessible sites and a flexible time. LAE also works closely with the many partner organizations to strengthen our community and promote life lo lifelong learning. CFL is one of those partners of LAE. But let me tell you about LAE. In 2011, when CFL wanted to expand to Lewiston area, we went and talked to the executive director and talked to some other staff. They said, no, we can't work with you. You are unknown. And that's true. We were not in Lewiston. And also, because 
they have tried to work with other organizations in the past to offer financial literacy on site, but it did not work well. So they were really hesitating to make us again uh, work or do this partnership. I told them, I remember exactly what I said, give us a chance. That's what I'm asking. But today, every year, since last year and this year, we have seen over 150 students from Lewis and Adal Education coming to take our courses. Thank you. I think they deserve the applause. So please help me in welcoming Lewis and Adal Education Director Bill Grant and those who came with him to receive this 2016 Commitment to Service Award. Thank you. Thank you, Claude, and on behalf of Lewis and Adult Education, I, I really appreciate this award, um, but it really is CFL that does the work in our area, and it is a, uh, a great partnership to have. I, I think you're underestimating that 150 number uh, because Clement and I were trying to figure out how to keep yes. the uh, fire department out of our room because it was so <laughs> packed, um, but he has such a great following, and, and we really appreciate this partnership, so thank you for this award. Yes. Uh, if I can say another word about uh, Lewis and Adal Education, same thing as uh, Paul and Adal Education, the biggest obstacle immigrants face when they come to this country is a language barrier. So Lewis and Adal Education and the Poland Adal Education are really doing a great job in SMCC and USM to fill the gap. Again, please give them a hand. The 2016 Outstanding Community Partner Award goes to Main State Housing. Main State Housing is known as the organization that opens the door to your future. I was introduced to Main State Housing by Debbie King Johnson, who is here tonight. And Rob Wood, I'm, I'm not sure if he's here yet. Uh, Main State Housing was the very first organization. People ask me why it took me so long to recognize them. They were the first, I'll repeat that again, to fund CFL, the very first organization. <laughs> and that support came through Rob Wood. I will be talking about you every year when I'm on stage because you know how you supported this organization and they connect to uh, Debbie King Johnson. Scott Kerr, our former board member, is also in the room. I remember the first trip we had when we went to Augusta to meet with McCormick, the former executive director, and Debbie King Johnson. They didn't hesitate a word to say how they're going to sponsor or support the organization. Matter of fact, I don't know if even some of the board member knows that even the logo we have was designed by Main State Housing. <laughs> Give them hands, please. So, I'm sure Deb King Johnson came with some other folks from Main State Housing. I would love to welcome them on stage to come and share a few words and also receive this award. Thank you all for being here tonight. 
On behalf of our directors and employees, I want to thank Community Financial Literacy for recognizing Maine Housing as its 2016 Outstanding Community Partner, and to say how appreciative I am for Claude's kind words, and certainly to be a part of this evening's celebration. I would like to acknowledge our agency director, John Gallagher, and also our deputy director, Peter Merrill, who are in our audience. If they could just stand. Yes, please. John, Peter. I'm very grateful to, uh, to Peter and John because they let me do what I do and it brings me to work with organizations uh, like CFL. Uh, Maine Housing is deeply honored to be recognized for our role in the important work that is carried out by CFL, who is, and you can attest to this, clearly the leader among the organizations seeking to improve the personal financial literacy of Maine people. And since our partnership began in 2009, it has to me been absolutely inspiring to watch CFL transform from a fledgling small nonprofit organization to this organization that you see today. They meet the needs of all of the immigrant and refugee communities in three cities and they have an amazing staff who work tirelessly to deliver the services and resources that empower our main families to achieve the financial stability and, rele and, and realize their full potential. Maine Housing believes that de de developing a strong community begins with securing a home for each of its members. Because it's home which is the foundation for building a stable and safe neighborhood, economic opportunity, good health, and educational success. Financial education is an essential tool, especially for the immigrant and refugee community as they strive to be financially stable in their new community. I personally can only imagine how overwhelming it must be to start over in a new country, having to adjust to a new language, a new culture, and very different traditions. The CFL students are excellent examples of just how courageous our new Americans are, and I greatly admire their determination. Financial education is more important than ever. It's the stability of all Maine families, and it's what they depend on to make sound decisions concerning budgeting, saving money, managing credit, setting money aside for emergencies, and so much more. And CFL understands this need and offers a variety of classes and even one-on-one -on -one counseling for the individuals in their communities. And it is all imperative because it helps shape their future. Maine Housing is very proud of its partnership with CFL. We extend our sincere congratulations to CFL for a job well done and thank all of CFL's partners for their support and commitment to furthering the financial education of Maine families. As Theodore Roosevelt said, far and away, the best prize that life offers is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. Maine Housing looks forward to continuing its support of CFL's programs and to help them work hard at work worth doing and witnessing the rewards of their success. Thank you. Once again, if you can give them applause, all those who earned, earned the awards. It's always hard to choose from all these many organizations that you see supporting CFL to be uh, the winner, but those who won, thank you for those for those who did a great work, and I really applaud you for supporting such a great cause. Now, let me welcome a dear friend and also a hardworking staff of Community Financial Literacy. Clema Yombe is our program coordinator. He ha he's, uh, he's going to introduce the, the two panelists Unfortunately, he's, he, uh, one of the panelists, I think, could make it. Uh, Clema will, say, will share a few words. But Clema has been with CFL in the last five years. He is getting his master's degree in economic development very soon, this year. So I'm not sure what we're going to say next year. But, um, but he's a very, very dedicated staff of CFL. And let me please, if you can help me, to welcome Clement on the stage and then to do the uh, 
Thank you. Good evening. I always tell Mara it's very difficult to take the stage after Claude. <laughs> He's so convincing and so charming that coming after him puts a lot of pressure on you. I thank Claude uh, for all these years of mentoring. I tell the board for providing me with the tools to teach all the classes that we've been doing. And uh, a special thanks to Mara, who is the face of the organization. Every time I need something. <laughs> Mara makes sure that I have everything I need for the class. And Stacy, the money maker of the organization. Thank you. <laughs> Floreka. <laughs> Floreka is uh, the person who's in charge of college access, and I always refer people to her if they want uh, information about accessing higher education. Thank you for your attention, and uh, I thank Claude again for his uh, warm introduction. In recent years, innovations in financial product and services delivery have increased financial access for the poor and the unbanked. Yet, for immigrants, asylees, and refugees, that road is still difficult to navigate. Low or no financial literacy may limit their ability to fully access those services. Low or no financial literacy may limit their ability to fully access the services. And moreover, low financial literacy is correlated with poor financial decisions about cash, asset, debt management. And in, in, in response, every year CFL offers trainings, training programs that aim to improve financial knowledge and skills among the immigrant refugees and those with low financial literacy level. These trainings have helped these individuals to increase their knowledge about financial concept and in turn boost their economic opportunities. This evening, we have two of these individuals, two of our students here to share how CFL trainings have had a tremendous impact in their lives. Our first panelist today, she's a native of Burundi her multicultural background and focus on the community collaboration led her to a number of volunteer opportunities and country representation through the United Nations Volunteer Program in Burundi. Melissa has an associate degree in management and business administration and is currently employed at the state of Maine, where she split her work day between department and vocational rehabilitation and Bureau of Employment Services at the Greater Portland Career Center. Melissa Tangere. Thank you. Our second speaker, second panelist, is from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He has been here for five years. In his native country, he was the executive director of Héritier de la Justice, a nonprofit specializing in human rights and more. To strengthen his knowledge in project management, he took two classes focusing on money management and saving to build wealth. He's impressed by how those courses help him budgeting, saving, and investing his money. Maurice ser served in many boards as a volunteer, and let me tell you that for the last year, 
I haven't been working so hard on recruiting students because Maurice does that for us even though we don't ask him to do so. Help me to welcome Maurice Namwira. Maurice. I want to thank both of you for coming. And I would like for you to take us through your journey from the time you met with uh, CFL until today. Well, thanks everybody for being here and taking your time to listen to me and my classmate, Maurice. I'm so humbled to be able to talk about this journey that brought me to where I am now. It didn't start as um, bigger as it is now, but I, I enjoyed being with CFL. I got to learn about CFL from, from a flyer I saw at Pauline Adult Education. And by that time, I didn't have any job, so I was, not, I was afraid I wasn't able to afford any classes, especially classes related to financial literacy. But the first time, the first call I made, Mara made it so easy for me to feel like I, I would be able to enroll and get to know about the financial system in America. So I thank so much CFL for giving us a chance, a very tremendous chance to um, get to know what kind of environment we are in and get to learn about how to manage whatever um, wealth we'll be able to make in this country. It is always a stressing life when you land in a country where you are a newcomer facing a white snow, <laughs> cheating, <laughs> nobody knows you. And you say, what is this? Why did I decide to leave my country? <laughs> and you have to start a new life. You are nowhere. And one day, I was walking on the road. I met a friend, Christian Bissimois, who introduced me to, Clo uh, to Clément. He told me, we are organizing some trainings in financial money management. I said, OK, I've been executive director, and I've been looking for money. This is the occasion for me to know how to deal with money in this country. <laughs> And I went to meet Clément, I told Clément, I'm really interested to know exactly what you are teaching people. And he said, he told me, okay, we're going to have a class at adult education. Thank you. I went there. The first lesson was concerning how we are always dreamers in our life. Dream, dream, and dream because the future belongs to dreamers, but if your dream is not transformed in a, in a goal, you will be dreaming forever. <laughs> First lesson. And I said, yeah, that's good. I've been dreaming for 30 years. Now I have to make a new plan. <laughs> and the Tema told us, the only way to make your dream become a, a, a goal, make a plan. Oh, step one, plan. Step two, budgeting. Step three, uh, no, have a good knowledge of banking system. Ah, yeah, that's good. I have dollars everywhere. But I never see a dollar on, on the ground. <laughs> never, ever. And I say, I want to make dollars. But he told us, if you are not credible, you won't succeed in this country. And how to make a credit being? Pay your bills on time. <laughs> pay your bills on time. Very good. <laughs> but don't forget to pay yourself first. Eh? <laughs> if you are paying your bills on time, you are putting money in pocket of other people, yes. but putting yours too. <laughs> and I said, this is a good training. 
I will start paying myself first mm -hmm. and then pay the bills on time and that way I will build my credit. This is how this training started changing my life. From the first day of the first hour of training, I made a plan in five stages. Stage one, transform my dreams in a goal. Stage two, know how banking system is working. Stage three, make your budget and know how to spend your money. Stage four, be a good uh, payer on time. And stage five, be aware of your credit. If you lose it, you will be forgetting forever. And let me tell you, last week I got a mail from Credit Karma. Yes. Credit Karma. <laughs> they told me, Maurice, your score has changed. Click on this link and you'll see. <laughs> My score has changed? When I saw the score, I don't tell you that score. <laughs> But I showed it to Claude and Clément. Okay. <laughs> you want to know? Yes. Excellent. 755. I just, I just want to follow up on that. This Mo couldn't be possible if I didn't take this class. So, Maurice, can you tell us, before you took a CFL class, what was your score? I was no score. <laughs> <laughs> I was nowhere. Zero score. From zero to 755, I can't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa. I'm going, I'm going back to you. Okay. You said when uh, you called Mara to take class for the first time, you didn't have a job. And uh, I just told people that you are main state employee. Yes. Now that you are making money, how do you link the knowledge that you acquired through us and the money that you are making now? How CFL classes were able to impact whatever you are doing now? While I was taking CFR courses, I was under general assistance, and I, I have to say that the state of Maine has a reproachable system of helping out immigrants to get settled and start a new life in, uh, in America. I, was, I had my bills taken care of so I could go to school and improve my knowledge and be ready, be fully prepared for uh, the workforce. So from there, I had to take classes. I loved taking classes with CFL. Money management and um, career explor exploration class with uh, Mr. Claude, which helped us to have an open mind and know how to search for a job online, apply for a job online, be prepared for the interview. And you know how easy it is when you get to see uh, people who went through the same part, path and telling you, oh, it is possible. So that's what these two teachers were doing. They were showing us that um, once, once you go there, out there in the real world, it will be so different from what you're learning here in class. Um, the money you think you'll be managing is not the same money you'll be earning because then you have to take off taxes and you have to, do, uh, to pay your bills first. And from my... Um, from my own experience, I know I, I was with uh, different students having different backgrounds, having worked in different uh, fields in Africa or somewhere else, but I wasn't part of that, that um, environment. I didn't have a job. I was a student when I came here in the United States, and um, I was so passionate about the personal finances because it was like a new environment for me. And then um, with the money management class, I learned how to make a budget how to manage my debts, credits, and also how to think about a retirement account, which is a total new, it was a total new subject for me. So I didn't know where to start from. And um, I was able to picture myself 
doing that from the knowledge I got from CFL classes. And um, I was able to apply for a job in the state using the skills I got from the classes, um, know how to sell yourself, know how to um, sell your, your skills to employers to, so that they can be able, able to see that you are, you are capable of doing the job they want you to do. Um, I wouldn't say that all of that was just um, from what I thought I knew. It was a big part of it was from what I learned in school in CFL classes. And I'm so thankful for um, them being able to share their experiences and show us, uh, help us not make the mistakes that they made. And um, yeah, because there are too many financial mistakes that people can do. Um, I was telling one of my classmates during the class, I'm sorry, I was talking while the, the, the teacher was talking as well. But I was telling him that I just got a check in my mailbox. I wasn't working yet. I didn't have my social security because um, you need that to, to start working in the United States. I didn't have my working papers, but I got a check in my mailbox. I know many people will be excited about this. But uh, the check was for 1900 and I really needed money in that time. I don't know for what I needed the money for, but I just knew that I needed money to have in my pocket or in my bank account, which I didn't have at the time. But the check was not something good for me. And as I was telling my friend about it, the teacher just came up with this scam system <laughs> where people um, kind of trapped you. They kind of um, do it in a purpose of getting you in a very, very bad, um, bad experience. So I was about to go cash a check, but I didn't do it because of the knowledge that I, I took from the classes. And I'm so thankful for it because I would have started my journey on a new, on a very, a very spoiled um, foundation. So I learned a lot from CFL and I'm so thankful for it. Thank you. So to both of you, if there is one thing you are going to remember about the class, in one word or one sentence, what would you say? I'm going to start with Maurice. <laughs> if there is one word, if you, can, if you can remember one word or one sentence about uh, the class. Pay your bill on time. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? Beyond paying your bills on time. It was one word, Morris. <laughs> yes, please. That's yeah. what. I just want to mention something before I stop. <laughs> CFL is community financial literacy. But I think we have to give him a new name today. <laughs> Challenge your freedom by learning finance. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, it's your turn. One word or one sentence. Oh, thank you for giving me a sentence because I was going to say <laughs> that my word was going to be as long as a sentence. But have, has anybody here <laughs> drove a car without a driver's license or taken a test? That is how a lack of financial literacy will be for you. It's very risky and you get yourself into a dangerous path that you will be having a hard time getting out of. So I would, say, I would never um, consider myself um, able to do what I do now without having CFL by my side telling me what to do in the right time. Before before I thank you, uh, I, I would like to thank all of our students, and I want to acknowledge them. If you are here, if you are our current student or previous student, please stand up so we see where you are. We thank you for coming to class even when we had winter storm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thank Maurice and Melissa 
uh, for your time, for accepting to be the panelist, and I really thank you for the job uh, and the work you've been doing for CFL, even you know behind the curtains. Someone called me from Texas to ask about credit, and he told me, Melissa, give me your number so I can call you. <laughs> we thank you, and uh, thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. That was amazing. Clement, thank you so much for all you do for CFL and for moderating that. Melissa and Maurice, thank you for being in Portland. We are so happy to have you in our community. You make our community a better place. Um, and that, I think, was a really great example of how CFL touches the lives of those who utilize their services. So I think this is a pretty perfect opportunity. This is going to be fun. And this is going to be fast. I encourage you, please, make sure you have your brochures. We are going to do a quick paddle raise. Now, this is an opportunity for you to, now that you've heard about CFL and have heard from some of our students, it's an opportunity to give back to our organization because we cannot do what we do without the generous support of all of our donors and our sponsors. As you heard, CFL definitely provides services that changes the lives of new Mainers as well as low-income Mainers. We've helped provide them with the knowledge and the tools to provide for their families, to save for college, to go to college, and to start a business. And we couldn't do any of this without your generous donation. So I am going to start. You've got numbers on the back of your brochures. I'm going to start with a contribution of $300 to CFL. Now, this is not an arbitrary number. We have learned from past participants that $300 can buy a new Mainer, a college transcript review. Now this is a serious challenge that new Mainers have when they come to the states. They try to find ways that they can receive credits or maintain their credentials that they have earned in foreign countries. It is not easy to do. So a college transcript review allows graduates with international education to achieve their higher education and professional goals by having their education qualifications evaluated and recognized in the United States. So obviously an extremely important service. The cost of this critical service is $300. So with that, I would like to ask those in the room who wish to contribute $300 to CFL to support this service for one of our students to please raise your brochure. We have individuals who will get your number. I know Helen has several people from her office here who she has asked oh so kindly to participate. So we will find you too. But this is great. Thank you so much for all of those who raised your number. That's fantastic. I'm now going to ask those who might be willing to contribute $150 to CFL. So for every two of you who raise your paddle, we can provide another student with a transcript review. So find a buddy in the room. And so for all of those who wish to contribute $150, please raise your, raise your brochure. Matt, that's you. Raise your brochure. I'm going to start calling people out. I see Dave. Thank you. I see Tim in the background. He may have already given. I see Scott over here, Mike, Laura, Tay. Thank you, Mutima. That is excellent. And my final ask, because every single bit counts, I would ask those who are willing to contribute $50 to CFL to please raise your brochure now. That is awesome. Thank you. Oh, there's a lot. I see 267. I see 14. 34. 226. 295. That was awesome. Thank you so much. A round of applause for all of you in the room. Thank you. Thank you. Your contributions truly make all the difference. We thank you so much for coming. Just to give a few brief closing remarks and to announce the winners of the silent auction, I would like to invite Bill Brown to the stage, who serves as the chairman of the CFL Board of Directors. Thank you, Quincy, and uh, thank you everyone who came here tonight to celebrate my 51st birthday. Um, 
Thank you. We talk a lot about new Mainers at CFL, but what about the old Mainers? That's what, right? So, uh, but for whatever reason you're here, thank you for attending. Uh, if you purchased a ticket or an auction item or made some other contribution or just simply learned more about CFL or helped somebody else learn about CFL tonight, you really helped us to fulfill the goals of this event. We're very happy to have you here. Um, and one more thank you to Helen Andrioli and her team. Um, dedication, countless hours, boundless energy, many emails to the board nagging us about stuff, but this is what you get for that kind of uh, persistence. So thanks again, Helen. Um, and you know, I'll take this chance, hopefully you know you're not worn out with the thank yous. This isn't gonna be like the Academy Awards where you have to play the music to get me to awkwardly leave the stage or anything like that. But <clears throat> I just wanna say that um, my fellow board and committee members um, invest so much time and talent in this organization and it's really based on a deep belief in our mission a commitment to the continual improvement of our organization and really just this fundamental desire to improve the lives of other people in our community and I think that results in a very high level of governance for this nonprofit entity very proud to be a part of it um, oh. Is this going to be like your speech, Claude? People are going to be giving standing ovations every, every two minutes. Um, but I, I wanted to, again, mention our staff that constantly, every day, exceed our expectations. Um, they willingly and professionally and with a smile accommodate the needs and the quirks of our board as we schedule and reschedule everything and, and engage in so many different things. And um, they really are the hub of the wheel of this organization because they touch the volunteers the public, the community, the board, the committees, and uh, the, the glue that holds CFL together. And I just want to give that one extra thank you to our unbelievable staff. They're a joy to work with. Our, uh, our volunteers, um, <laughs> practically every board meeting or committee meeting that I attend at CFL, I find out something additional that our volunteers are doing that I didn't know before. And I'm almost embarrassed to not know how much our volunteers do. Um, and I think that, you know, I want to say this to the volunteers, your commitment to this mission with obviously no compensation and you know very infrequently any kind of recognition it really um, that kind of selflessness sets the example for volunteer uh, service and investment in our communities and I think you know that that kind of contribution is really the soul of our organization that's the the service model we were founded upon to our uh, donors our grant funders and our corporate sponsors I just want to thank you by taking a financial risk in supporting our programs, our operations, and our organization. And while everybody would like to say that every single penny goes right directly into a program, anybody who's involved in the governance of a nonprofit organization knows that that is simply not true. Um, I want to say thank you to the people that support this organization financially because you have been generous and far-sighted in helping us to not only serve our current programs but build our capacity to serve the future. Um, and on behalf of the Board of Directors, I just want to say that to all, the, all of you who give money to this organization, uh, we will continue to be committed to the prudent, responsible, and thrifty use of the resources that you have entrusted to us. We take it very seriously. <clears throat> Claude, I consider you a good friend partly because of, or maybe in spite of, the fact that you charmed me into joining you uh, in this endeavor nine years ago. <clears throat> I couldn't have dreamed of being in this situation, for one thing being here on my birthday, <laughs> having to give the closing remarks, but... Um, Happy birthday, Bill. Oh, thank you, thank you. Did I, <laughs> old Mainers, that's what we're going to be talking about from now on. Um, I remember we were just praying for that first $5,000 grant, and we were so grateful when we got it. And our, our first uh, annual event like this was in a conference room at Pretty Flaherty that held probably 25 people. And you know, here we are with dancers and everything else. It's just amazing. Um, so, you know, uh, Claude has not only tolerated me, but made me feel useful in this endeavor, which I previously knew absolutely nothing about before he talked me into it. Um, and I think that quality in him, you know, has resulted in really some really effective recruiting by Claude of the people that, that make this organization run. So the lesson you ought to take away from this is that if Claude Uganji calls you or asks you to lunch, watch out, unless you've got a significant amount of time to dedicate to a good cause. Um, so for our new uh, Americans, just a quick word. Um, f finally, most importantly, uh, thank you, because this is why we're here. Um, I appreciate your choice to live in the United States. I appreciate the choice that you've made to live in the state of Maine, most of the time with no particular ties to the state of Maine. Um, 
you have chosen to live here, raise a family, build a career, build a business, go to school, and as an old Mainer or a native Mainer, um, I just consider this a compliment to our state and our lifestyle. And uh, the fact that you've selected the country that I love and the state that I love to live in to make your home is, is very special to me. And I just want to say welcome to the United States. Uh, welcome to Maine and welcome home. Um, so now we'll get down to the good administrative stuff like who won what. And if I mispronounce any names, Somebody will correct me, probably my wife. Um, so, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. Uh, now, these are the winners of the silent auction. Nick Tenney, tribe photo. Matt Vieth. And Matt Vieth also won the Nick Tenney wave photo. The Nick Tenney waterfront goes to Alicia Roberts. The kayak package to Abigail Ingalls. Night out in Portland to Evangeline Hollander, the wine basket, Yvonne Mume, the barbecue for 25 to Joe Powers, and a weekend in Portland to Elaine Hilka. Great to see you all here. Hope to see you here next year. In the meantime, on Facebook, check out our webpage, Twitter, and talk to somebody you know about uh, CFL. And if you can volunteer between now and then, you'll enjoy the celebration so much next year. Thank you and good night.